So right off the bat, I'm currently facing a little bit of a creative block and I figured now would be the perfect time to show y'all something that I do when I'm facing these trying times. And what I'm about to show y'all is hands down the reason I'm able to make pretty much any type of music and just became a better producer overall. And all that that is, is just simply remaking songs. I'm constantly digging through music and sometimes I'll find a song that's in a style that I haven't really made before. And by remaking the song, you're kind of able to reverse engineer it and see exactly what goes into making that specific style of music it'll make more sense once y'all see me do it there's a specific type of music that i've kind of been tapped into the best way i could think to describe it is like early 80s disco funk rolling tr 808 digital synthesis i'm just gonna go ahead and put y'all on if y'all never heard of the sos band y'all gotta check them out hands down one of my favorite bands from the 80s super ahead of their time but anyways this is one of the songs that's kind of in that style i was talking about There's also this song by 52nd Street. So like off rip, you can tell it has a super similar drum bounce and like drum samples. They got the instrumental dub of the song I just played on YouTube. So you know what time it is. I'm just going to go ahead and get it lined up on the grid. I am using Ableton today, but you can really just do this in whatever program. My bad to the FL Studio Defenders. We have our reference track here. And obviously this is what we're going to reference the whole time we're making the beat. I like to start off with the drums. So I'm just going to go to this section at the beginning that has nothing but drums playing. And I'm going to get the drums as accurate as I can and try and make it sound exactly like the original track does. So just off listening to it, all of the drum samples are very obviously from the Roland TR-808. I'm probably just going to use the Ableton stock TR-808 sounds. There is a specific kick I want to use though. I'm using the 90s punch kick from my Dream Sonics drum kit. Hands down the best drum kit out for making the type of beats that I make. Just going to keep it real with y'all. I'm just going to straight up copy the kick pattern from the reference track. Boom, pretty simple kick pattern. So for the snare, I'm just going to look up 808 snare and there it is. Very basic snare pattern. I'm just going to get rid of the tails on the snare. It sounds like they have an 808 clap layered with the snare too. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the clap. Sounds like they have an open hat on the snare. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the open hat and I'm going to get the closed hat too while I'm at it. I'm gonna grab the cowbell. And I'm gonna get that rim shot they were going so crazy with. I think the only thing I'm missing is this tom roll at the end. So I'm gonna grab the 808 toms. Theirs are a little bit higher pitched. That sounds about right. All right, so we pretty much have the drums finished. I'm just going to rename all the tracks and put them in a group right quick. So on the reference track, you can tell they have a ton of reverb on the drum bus. So I'm just going to do the same. I'll grab Valhalla Vintage Verb. And chances are, if it's a track from the 80s, it's probably a plate reverb. So I'm just going to go ahead and select plate and just mess with the settings until it sounds as close to the reference as I can make it sound. And I'm actually gonna group all of the sounds except for the kick and just name this group like reverb and put the reverb only on these sounds so that way the kick is still dry and kind of punches through the mix better. Sounds pretty close to the original. I'm just gonna throw a glue compressor on the drum bus. I always use the same settings on my drum bus. Just need a little bit just to glue it together. And I'm just throwing in a little bit of tape saturation from Waves J37. I'm pretty sure the pattern is the exact same in the second half. I'm gonna just make sure. Yeah, it's the same. Now that we have the drums finished, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the music. The music can be a little bit tricky at first, but the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. I'm gonna start off with these two piano chords at the beginning. 
in the background. I don't know if you can hear them. If I had to guess, it's probably from a DX7 and I have a DX7 right here and a DX27. I got the dual wheel DXs. I don't have all the cartridges for the DX7 with me right now, so I can't go through all the presets. I think a really good alternative is Keyscape. If you go to the vintage digital keys folder, it has a bunch of DX7-esque sounds. <laughs> Pretty sure those are the chords. Sounds like it's just those two chords the whole time, so I'm just gonna duplicate it over. I think I'm gonna try and do the bass line next. I'm grabbing Repro 1. This is a pretty good VST for like synth bass sounds. I'm just gonna go through the presets until I find something that sounds pretty similar and then probably fine tune it from there so it sounds exact. This one sounds pretty close. I just gotta get rid of the octave. Same exact process that I did with the keys. I'm just going to go section by section and then replay the bass pattern. Just going to quantize it a tiny bit. Don't want to overdo it so it still has that humanized feel. the patterns the exact same in the second half again so I'm just gonna duplicate it over and then for the time being I'm just gonna filter out some of the lows from the keys just so it doesn't clash with the synth bass all right so now I'm gonna try and tackle the bell lead sound for some reason I feel like the Korg Triton may have some bells that sound similar to that so I'm just gonna go through some sounds and see if I can find anything Sounds kind of close. I may have to layer something else with it, but I'm going to probably rock with the hybrid bell for now. Same deal with the lead. I'm just going to quantize it a little bit. Throw a little bit more reverb on it. So we're already getting pretty close with just these three sounds. I think the next thing I want to add is this like guitar lick at the beginning. I'm just going to pick whichever one of these sounds the best. I kind of want to grab that little synth stab too. Sounds like they have a delay on it too, so I'm just going to grab Echo Boy Jr. Alright, so now that we have like this little foundation for the remake, this is usually when I'll just deactivate the reference and then just start kind of doing my own thing, adding whatever layers I hear. one of those like high-pitched disco strings so I'm just gonna use Diva for that like some harpsichord action perhaps maybe have some chimes I'm not feeling this, so I'm going to pitch it up and see if I start feeling it. Never fails. All 
right, so this is pretty much our eight bar loop that, you know, we would structure out from here. You don't have to just use the same chords as um, the reference track though. Like you can add on to that progression. So for example, we could like, oh, check me out. We could start on this chord. Go up there. get the point you can kind of take it wherever you want but i mean we started off with here let me pitch the reference up So main takeaway I want y'all to have from this video is going into this, I had pretty much no clue how to make a beat in this style. But now that I've remade this song, like I know exactly the steps I got to take to make a beat like this since I've already done it. And it's going to be super easy to make beats like this in the future. And you can pretty much copy and paste this to any style of music. And you're just going to get better and better at making, you know, whatever you're listening to. Next time you're feeling creatively blocked, I would highly recommend just remaking a song you like. And you'll be surprised how easy it may end up being. And the knowledge you'll gain from that.